Hello, and welcome to Win Automation Tutorials. I'm Tyler. This video will be going over image actions. When you're using Win Automation, eventually we'll have to work with images. Whether you're downloading an image or waiting for it to load, Win Automation has actions for that. I personally use image waiting when scraping data, navigating a website, or like today, breaking a video game. Knowledge of image actions will enhance anyone's Win Automation toolkit, so let's get started. All right, so step one in your Win Automation building process is finding a website or application that you want to automate. Today's example is going to be using mouseaccuracy.com. It's a game that people use to increase their um, mouse clicking accuracy. Essentially, if you haven't seen it before, I'm just going to demo it real quick. Um, the goal of the game is to click these circles as fast as possible. And what I'm going to show you today with Win Automation is not necessarily a business use case, but it is a use case uh, that can help increase your knowledge about the application and can make you better at thinking about the actions that you can put in your Win Automation process uh, to better speed up your process or just solve a solution, solve a problem in a unique way. So uh, here's my total score going through it. Um, by hand i'm not totally sure if we can get the bot to beat it i know uh, with some tweaking we definitely can but we're gonna try to automate this process as best as we can and uh i'm just gonna do that by open up win automation so those of you who have seen win automation uh have seen me use this little shortcut before but we're gonna click Control n and that's gonna open up the new process uh builder widget and i'm gonna type in uh break the game so the new process is going to be called break the game and those of you who have watched my last tutorial we used the red recorder but we're not going to be using that today we're going to use the process designer and uh, i'll show you why um, specifically it's because we can't do things uh, like image capture um, by using the web recorder but what we can use the Red Recorder for is to grab this uh, Chrome tab real quick for me. So essentially, this is like the fastest way to grab that Chrome tab real quick, uh, is to open up the Web Recorder by clicking this real quick, and then uh, just have it launch Chrome and get this website for you. So whatever tabs you have open, you can easily access that via the Web Recorder. Um, and we don't necessarily need to know that that works because I know it works. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to start automating the game. So if you type an image into the search panel, you can see that there's a lot of different things that describe image. Um, the ones that we're going to be really looking at are the conditional image statements. So conditionals are things that allow you to set up if then statements. So if, if this is on the screen, uh, move mouse to this location and do this. So uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. So if the start button's on the screen, so we're going to capture that. If the start button, and I'm going a little quick, but what I did was I opened up the image repository and I clicked get a new image and uh, we're going to call it the start button. So if the start button's on the screen, we're gonna check only the foreground window to speed it up a little bit and set the tolerance down to 10, ah, that's fine. And what we're gonna wanna do is if the start button's on the screen, we're gonna go into advanced. We're gonna wait for that to appear on the screen for about, I don't know, three seconds. Uh, yeah, three seconds is fine. And then we're gonna send a left mouse click after moving. Um, and then we're gonna just ret retry once. So, um, this is just exception handling, and essentially, if it doesn't appear within the first three seconds, it'll retry once, uh, and then it'll fail. So we're just going to click OK. That set it up. So it says if uh, image is found in foreground, it'll wait three seconds to move mouse. So we just click Go, and it's going to open up that website, and it should click the Start button. Uh, it wants to but it didn't work all right so maybe we need to make this tolerance be 30. let's try that it searches the foreground yeah we're good let's try it one more time okay so it opened up and it clicked it okay so 
image resolution wasn't perfect, so essentially we need to change it to 30. That's totally fine. So next thing we're going to do is now that we started the game, we want to click the targets. So uh, we need to essentially get a window that has the targets. So I just started this game. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new image. We don't need this image anymore because we just made a new one. I'm going to capture a new image, which is going to be... Uh, let's just make it this guy. It's going to be this guy. So let's just capture a little red, red target. Put that on in there. Click OK. And then we want the tolerance down to, I don't know, like 10. And then we're going to only be searching the foreground window. Search the whole ground of the foreground window. Uh, yep, yeah, that's good. And repeat once. So essentially, now we should have it have a bot that can open up the game, click the start button in about now, and it's going to look for a target. Doesn't look like it's going to get it this time. Oh, no, it did. It did. Okay, cool. So, yeah, no, it worked. So, it got the target. It took about like six seconds so it was a little bit too long but it did get the target so that's that's a good good starting point so what we're going to do now is we're going to copy and paste that again since this works it can find the target and what we're going to do is we're actually going to just put it into a conditional loop statement and we're going to say zero uh 200 let's just have it loop through 200 times and put this move mouse statement back in there and then uh, we're gonna wait for the image to appear. Uh, we don't need it to retry. It'll just fail if it doesn't find it within three seconds because we're just looping over and over and over again. So that's totally fine. Um, and actually let's just make it one because ideally it doesn't take that long for it to fail. So let's see how that goes. So if it was able to click it here, here with these settings, it should be able to do it here when it's inside of a loop. So it's going to open up the game, it's going to click start, and then it's going to look for targets. So let's see how long it's going to take for it to find one of those targets. So it took four seconds and now it's looping through. It found one, uh, it found another one. It's having a little hard time. Maybe I need to, oh, it failed. So it failed because it couldn't find it on the screen, uh, which means we actually just need to uh, set this to like 10 and set this to one. So that's just going to allow it to retry as many times as possible. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have it try one more time. And I think this will be able to make it get to the end, to be honest. And there's all there's all sorts of optimizations we can put in here um, to make it a little bit better um, but I'm just tr this is like literally one of my first attempts so I'm just trying to see how good we can get it this is actually working a lot better to be honest it's retrying quite a bit uh, that retry exception was definitely the thing we need to put in because it's retrying 10 times before it fails and essentially if it sees any of those little tiny guys on the screen it's gonna go after them so this is actually doing pretty well I think it's gonna get up to like 72 so honestly, that almost beat my score. Um, and we haven't even really optimized it yet, which is really, really cool. Um, so the goal of it's not really to optimize it. The goal of it's just to actually show you guys that you can use uh, this image repository. Um, and essentially you can learn a lot of cool stuff by using this image repository. You can break games, you can navigate websites and such. So. Uh, it's very, very useful to use this move to mouse to image and uh, clicking ideology. Um, I use it for a lot of things. So before we get done, I guess, um, just for f funny giggles, I'm going to use the move mouse to image one more time. Uh, I think we're going to actually put one more conditional in here as well. So if image, uh, so if image exists, and we're going to add uh, the tweet, tweet score. So if this exists, I think I'm going to break out of this loop. I'm going to click the tweet. I'm going to click it. 
gonna have it click tweet. Tweet. So we just type tweet, so now it's gonna be looking for that. So if that image uh, exit loop. So if that image exit loop, um, this is getting a little out of hand. So let's just put it down to five. And then we're gonna delete this because we want it to click that good old tweet button. Um, that's gonna be the last thing that we do. It's gonna click that tweet button. I'm not even gonna have it really send out a tweet, but I wanna see if it can click that tweet button at the end. Exit out of this loop and uh, click that sweet tweet button before we go. But this is just a little bit of uh, the thought process of how you can possibly use um, the move mouse to image statement to continue to go through and uh, optimize your project. Did I accidentally set a breakpoint here? Yeah, I did, I'm stupid. All right, so that's why it wasn't working. All right, let's try it one last time because I think I accidentally clicked like breakpoint, which is, uh, it'll stop the process, which is why we saw it not really doing anything. So I got rid of those breakpoints and I'm actually going to um, make sure that this doesn't have anything that's like actually killing us. And then we're gonna start that again because now that we don't have breakpoints, it should be great. So if you ever notice that your thing's not, your win automation process isn't doing its thing, it might be because you accidentally had that little red thing uh, clicked the breakpoint. And as you can see now, um, it's looping through properly. Now that I have the little red buttons away, uh, it's because the breakpoints aren't there anymore, which is uh, great. So it won't, it won't, I won't need to click the next step button is all that says. So now that we're good, it's looping through. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, so that's gonna fail. And then I hopefully the if statement is going to say, hey buddy, break out of the loop. Nah, it just, it just broke itself because I need to have this if statement above. So it worked better if I had this if statement right here. And that's really what it needs. Uh, so we're just gonna do that real quick. So be aware of where your conditionals are located in your for loop, because if your for loop can't get to the if statement, uh, then it really doesn't matter. So if the it's, if statement is at the front, now that you can see, um, it's at the front of the loop, uh, when it appears, it should get caught. Um, unless I don't have like a retry on it, which I don't think I put a retry on it. Um, but this will be our last attempt. You kind of, you kind of get what I'm going for. We're going to be using that if conditional if statement to look for the tweet. And that's going to fail real quick, I think. Dang, it needs to be up here. So it didn't get to the if statement, uh, which is unfortunate. But we can continue to tweak this uh, if we really wanted to, uh, to where this, I believe, we just need to uh, go to next action. Yeah. So essentially, if it fails, just go to next action. And actually, we're just gonna run that real quick just to see if that actually fixes it because I'd love to know if it actually does. So this would be called your debugging phase. I wouldn't even call it optimization yet because the clicking is actually still pretty slow. I think a human can beat it. Um, but there's many ways to speed up that process, giving it smaller search ratios, um, giving it uh, better images to look at the circle because these circles are changing shape uh, and size. So essentially it's not always gonna be the right size when it's looking. Um, and then we are now done with the game 
and hopefully it's going to move on to the next action instead of crashing and yes it did and we clicked the tweet button we've done it we have done it the bot's gone and almost tweeted for me so that's fantastic and that's all i really wanted to show off guys um you can use this move to mouse button uh and a lot of ocr image type stuff to uh, do some pretty cool things in Windows Automation. And I know this wasn't like a business use case, but it was um, just a fun little application that uh, can teach you a lot. Um, because as you as you can see, uh, those images were changing different sizes. And if I actually went into the process of optimizing this and making this uh, unhumanly good, uh, it would probably require me a lot of work with these conditionals and with these uh, image statements to actually get it working pretty well. So. Um, when you run into this type of scenario inside of a business use case, if you've done some practice like this, uh, I would assume it's going to make that business use case uh, not only you be able to think about it like in a different way and develop new solutions, but um, it'll make it a lot faster as well. You'll be able to optimize a lot better because you'll have done something that's way more complex than just uh, downloading a PDF or using OCR to extract images from the PDF, right? So. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time, uh, peace out.